You know, they say a lot of programs can't run on Macintosh, and you know what? I've also heard that a lot of viruses can't either, okay? I corona a lot of things on this thing. I corona a lot- Yeah! That, pff, that's the way we're starting this video. Hi everybody, welcome back to the old channel, Runeski. So, today, I think it'd be a really cool idea if we go over some of my past videos that I've made, and a little bit of corrections, if you will. A lot of fun things that you guys have brought up in the comment section, just as a way to, I don't know, put you guys into the content. I've been making videos for so long, and the YouTube algorithm kind of trains YouTubers to make a lot of one-off content. However, no way, I'm throwing that aside. I think it's really cool that you guys have been so incredibly engaged with everything I've made in the last month or two, and I want to give back, and you guys have brought up so many cool new things, and I'm like, oh, I wish I talked about that in the video. Oh, I forgot about that. And so that's what we're doing today. Your comments on the last couple videos, and a lot of my mistakes have been pointed out. Let's go. Also, if you're one of those people that came from the homepage and just refuses to subscribe, hey man, come on, help us out. Join the community. It's a nice feeling. To be fair, I do it with a lot of people. I don't subscribe to so many, but I watch every one of their videos and I've recently gotten the habit of actually subscribing so I can like be a part of it. I leave more comments. I don't know, you can join. We're nice here. Like this video will tell you, let's go. So a couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a video in which I took the British driving theory test. And believe you me, I've seen the comments. I know what I made a mistake on. Somehow, I got all the questions about gears correctly, despite having an absolutely backwards understanding of how gears work. Just American problems. Maybe just Evan problems. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Evan, gear one is when you go really fast. Me, engine screaming whilst doing 25 miles an hour in first. Very fast. Also me, engine nice and quiet doing 70 miles an hour in fifth. Very slow. Oh. Uh, my friend Kim coming into my comment section with, Also, Evan, how do you have such a warped idea of how gears work? Have you never ridden a bike? Actually, Kim, thank you very much for the comment. I think I understand why my knowledge of gears is so warped. In the video, I specifically said, Oh, at one, you go faster, right? So five, you go slower. That is in relation to a bike, but not your speed, but the speed of your legs. I think I was thinking of how when you have your bike in gear one, your feet are going and when you're, you know, in five, you're like so your feet are very slow. Sure, you can go faster, but your feet, the most important bit. So when I'm thinking of driving a car, I was like, okay, so if you put it in one, like it's a gosh darn Flintstones car, yeah, I'll be running like crazy. The car, okay, I'm sorry. Explains gears wrong, gets question right, you broke me. It's like that math meme that came out where the teacher had said, I don't know how, but you used the wrong formula and got the correct answer. Hey, I'll take those points. Also, as a lot of you have pointed out in the comments, if I pass my driving practical in an automatic car, I will not be legally allowed to drive a stick shift. And you guys acted like that was a big deal to me. It really isn't. Why would I ever want to drive a stick shift? I just don't. Also, I thought I made a really good analogy about how you don't need to know how to use a rotary phone in order to use a modern day phone. And people were like, Evan, you don't know how to use a rotary phone? No, I do. I'm just saying you don't have to know how in order to use a normal phone, okay? All right, let's change gears. So two weeks ago, I uploaded a video in which we looked at an Ask Reddit thread called American Problems You're Too European to Understand. And we got some good comments on that one. First, we have Morgan with, when he's talking about always being near a tube stop, have you heard of South London? Yes, I lived in Peckham my whole life. In my whole life because I lived in Peckham for a full year. Not only that, it wasn't even Peckham. It was more like Burgess Park Camberwell, which if you're familiar with South London, is actually the only area within zones one and two of London that is more than a mile from the nearest tube station. I suffered that, okay? But even still, as I did say in the video, you can walk to a bus stop to get to a tube station. There's always a solution there. It might take a little bit longer, but it's still better than nothing. But as I said in that video, that is kind of one of the big reasons why I don't want to live in South London anymore. I like the transport links of the North. I'm too European to understand that the tri-state area is a real thing and doesn't just exist in Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, I didn't actually know that was from Phineas and Ferb because I missed out on that Phineas and Ferb boat. I was a bit too old by the time it came on TV. But yeah, tri-state area, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. And that's what someone from South Jersey will tell you. If you live in North Jersey, you'll say, oh, tri-state area, you mean New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. Or if you're from New York, you're like, what, Pennsylvania? You mean New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or if you're from Ohio, it goes on. There are many different tri-state areas in the US. Mine specifically is very much just mine. Do you know a place where three states meet and have the same broadcasting area? Well, you just found yourself tri-state area. Congratulations, you can write for Phineas and Ferb now. Uh, Donkle Puss, is that the name of the platypus? Uh, Platy? Lemmy? I really don't know. A, a Dr. Hunkenschmerz? It's something, something German, right? Platy, it's it's Platy. It's gotta be Platy and Doof, Doofenschmerz. Doofenschmerz. 
See, this is what I get. This is just from memes. Different states have different tax systems. Well, unless your restaurant happens to be located directly on the border between two states, I fail to see how that's relevant. Well, this is a comment where there was a lot of these comments and I kind of went, I don't think you get it because you ain't American. You don't understand what we're going through. Until I got an incredibly intelligent comment that caused me to genuinely have like a brain fart where I went, I can't believe I've never thought about it like that. Arturo Pareto, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly there. When you talk about marketing for the tax prices, you could advertise it as say, $1.99. And that's tax included. You just change the price of the burger in each state so that when you factor in the tax, it always comes out to $1.99. The base price and the tax might be different for each state, but the final price is the same. How did I not think that? I think it's just, my incredible Americanness growing up that I just go, oh, you couldn't do that, man. There's too many states, so they'd have to change the prices all over the place. I never once thought, just charge the same price and have different profits on each state because of different taxes and different margins. Ah, it's genius. I, I, I guess that's how it works everywhere else. That must be how it works in the EU as well. I don't know how that never crossed my mind. I just immediately thought, different state taxes. Well, who cares? The company could just charge the same price and the state taxes come out of different states differently. Thank you. Th this is the whole point of this video, by the way. This is one of those comments that made me go, dang, you guys are freaking smart. I love you. And now thanks to this community, my opinion on value added tax and US state tax has completely changed. So thank you. How can we fix it in the US now? I genuinely think this is so much of a better system. Well, when here come the toilet comments, a lot of Europeans were very upset about how a lot of American toilet stalls have very large gaps in them. And so we have a comment here from Beverly that says, my parents told me that the toilet stall gap was because there was such a huge drug problem in the 80s, people would go into the bathroom stalls, overdose, die, and then be found hours later. So a lot of places started having gaps in their stalls to discourage this. This is just something my parents told me. Now, this is one possible reason. I've tried to look this up and find a lot more information on this, and there's three major reasons why the US has these things that I didn't understand before making my previous video. Yeah, you can now glance in so you can see if people are doing drugs. I feel like that's not a really good solution. That's like, well, we'll just close the bathrooms. Can't do drugs in them now. It's kind of like having a pain in your toes. You chop off your foot so you don't have to feel it anymore. Not a good solution. Another possible reason is that with those big gaps, it's a lot easier to clean. So you can go under as a cleaner and quickly clean, of course, without having to pay for the bathrooms, unlike Europe. But yes, easily go in with a mop, bam, bam, bish, bash, bosh, you're done. And the third possible reason is the reason I think is probably true, only because what do we know about the US and why they make a lot of decisions? Money. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper to make these gap-filled stalls. It's a lot cheaper to manufacture, the doors are cheaper, get, there's a lot less material. Sad. But hey, I don't know. If you have any other ideas about why the bathroom stalls might have such big gaps in the States, please leave me a comment. I'll give you a heart. We can signal boost it. I want to know why too. The UK is just as bad for student debt. That's generalized. Scotland is free. I feel like Scotland is like the vegan of the UK. We don't have to ask if someone's Scottish. They'll tell you. They'll tell you they're Scottish because they got free education. I'm, I'm just ch jesting. I'm just kidding, of course. Except for the fact that it's true. Sorry, I did make a generalization because the UK is made up of four distinct countries and it's very easy to lump them in, such as when people do that for Europe. But yeah, if you're unaware, Scottish citizens do not have to worry about tuition fees in Scotland, so they don't want to be lumped in to the rest of the UK. Sorry. And after I defended your haggis, I guess you guys just can't be satisfied. And last week my video was about an Ask Reddit thread of European problems that Americans are thankful they don't have. And one of the top comments was from Rayatron, which says, it's kind of sad that the things that Americans don't understand about Europe are all trivial things, but the things that Europeans don't understand about America are to do with a basic lack of support from their government to their citizens. You hate to see it. A lot of the American problems that Europeans had were things that were pretty big in terms of like, you have to pay for an ambulance, how do you deal with all that student debt, how does tipping work, why is it that you don't get any sick days? Yes, a lot of the American problems with Europe were things like, where's all my free ketchup? <laughs> free ketchup is just really important. Ketchup? <laughs> Healthcare. <laughs> it's kind of a hard decision. There was actually another top comment from Gianna which said, American problems, lack of human rights and going bankrupt for trying to acquire those human rights. European problems, sometimes restaurants charge for ketchup and people get in trouble for being racist. But then again, I think the tone of comments is definitely hugely different. Sure, one seems a bit more serious, uh, but as Sarah points out, Americans, the comments of their video were more things like, haha, yeah, we don't like that either. Whereas Europeans were a lot more defensive and saying like, oh yeah, well, so what if we have to pay for a toilet? At least we have free healthcare. It's just a little fun. I did think that was quite interesting that Americans are at least, according to the comment section of my video, able to laugh a bit more about the issues that they're having. Whereas Europeans, 
I know is a, a very broad area, but seem to be a lot more defensive. Like, um, no, th you can't say that. What about this? It, that's, it, it's just fun. We're just making a fun video about things we're complaining about. Sure, free ketchup isn't the end of the world, but neither is a weird bathroom stall. We're all just having fun here, okay? Just calm down, just calm down. It's funny how Americans always refer to Europe as if it's one country with one culture. Even in the USA, there can be vast differences between different states. Imagine making a blanket statement about all the USA based on Alaska, Hawaii, or any other state. You just can't do that. I kind of disagree with this comment a bit because sure, there are vast subcultures within the US, but they are all unified as American culture. It, it is, I don't really think that analogy really works. I do agree that it is very commonplace for Americans to be like, oh, you know, like Europe, which is like saying, oh, you know, like Asia. That, you can't really make that analogy. You can't be saying things like, Asian people really care about their families. Asian? What does that mean? There's, that's a huge continent that has loads of different cultures. Whereas in the US, it is just the US. Europe, it doesn't really work. Cause even in that video where I'm saying things like, oh, we have screens in our windows in the US. Why don't they have those in Europe? We do, said Milan, Italy. I hope you can keep the corona out. We don't need your screens, yelled Scotland. There are far too many countries to generalize Europe, sure. But if you're making fun observations about different things, eh, it's not so big a deal. Paying for bathrooms makes sense to me because somehow the bathrooms need to be cleaned. That cleaning should be done by people and those people should be paid. That seems like an argument that no one was arguing against. A bit of a straw man there. I disagree with their sentiment only because what do you think happens to the bathrooms that you don't pay to use? Do you think those are just cleaned by people that aren't paid? I'd like to let you know, that's not the case. Do you think free restrooms aren't cleaned? Because they definitely are. It's just that the people who pay the cleaners are the people who own the building. As opposed to in Europe, where it's kind of shuffled off unto us for some reason. Like, oh, the consumer, you guys should pay for it instead of the building owner. I disagree. I should not have to pay to pee. No me gusta. No me poopsta. <laughs> My Spanish is coming along great. And I am pretty darn sure that some of those really popular bathrooms and train stations make way more money than what they're actually paying the cleaners. And where's that money go? Back to the building owner. Why? Just, just make it free. That's just the Schengen area, which is the German speaking countries. No, it isn't. I know, I, I made a big old boo-boo. I think I tried to cut myself off from the sentence while I was talking in the video, but that's not how talking works. And so I just kind of stuck it in the video anyway. Yeah, the Schengen area is not just German speaking countries. Schengen totally is a German word. Uh, but absolutely not just the area of German-speaking countries. This is actually the Schengen area. So, uh, yes, France is my favorite German-speaking country. Allons-y. But yeah, if I make a silly mistake like that, please call me out. I'll give it a big ol' heart and be like, oops, which I did on this one. I am so surprised the concept of ground floor versus first floor and et cetera wasn't brought up. That's one of the simple things that always manages to trip me up when I travel. I also don't know how that didn't come up because if I had left a comment on the Reddit thread, that would have been number one. Why is it that when you walk in, to a building, onto the first floor you walk onto, you climb up the stairs and English people go, now this is the first floor. No, it's not, it's just on that, on the ground. The ground floor is the first floor. Do you just not count it? Is it floor zero? You're like, are we in the zeroth floor? We call it the ground floor. I don't like that, okay? First floor, second floor, third, just count all the way up. Let's not go into how the 13th floor doesn't exist in a lot of hotels, that's its own can of worms. Or beans, beans. I need to buy beans. Hope you guys are doing really okay with this whole virus situation. I know it's really scary, not to drop the mood, but also, yeah, please uh, stay safe and uh, I'd give you a big hug if I was allowed, but I'm even social distancing the camera right now. It's a good six feet away. Please don't give me a fake. The best you could do in the situation like this, hopefully, is to find a little humor. And if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a big old thumb and subscribe because I make new videos every single Sunday. You can watch one of these guys over here. Or my travel channel. Did you guys know I've got a travel channel? Wow. I did a lot of trips recently. Can't travel again for a bit. Anyway, I'll see you guys on my next one. Thank you so much for all the recommendations. Goodbye. Also, my YouTube channel now has a join feature. If you want to join and get a cool icon, I guess that's cool. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.